Hey, really quick before I get started, this is January's monthly giveaway from Club Crochet. If you want to learn how you can get some free stuff from Club Crochet by just crocheting this pattern, go to clubcrochet.com slash giveaway. Hey there, I'm Louie, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to crochet a Koopa shell from Super Mario Brothers. Really quick before I get started, if you want to follow along with the written interactive version of this pattern or download the free printable PDF version of the pattern, go to clubcrochet.com slash shell. In this video, I'm going to be going into the most detail on how to make the actual crocheted um, Koopa shell here, but I will at the end talk briefly about how to turn it into a blue shell from Super Mario Kart. Um, yeah, I'll teach you how to crochet the various parts, uh, but I won't go into extreme detail on that. This pattern is relatively easy to crochet. The difficult part is actually sewing everything together, uh, but we'll get to that later. For this pattern, you're going to need the following materials. I'm using all worsted weight cotton yarn um, in colors green, white, black, and tan. And because I'm using all worsted weight, yarn. I'm using a size G 4 millimeter crochet hook. You'll also need a pair of scissors, of course, a darning needle to sew things together. I suggest getting a crimped end darning needle like this if you can. If not, that's all right. And you'll need um, something to stuff stuffing in and some stuffing. I use the back of my crochet hook, but if you don't have that, using a pencils eraser, that'll work as well. All right, well, without further ado, let's get hooking. We're going to start by making the base of the shell. Okay, so I'm going to be starting with the magic loop method. Now, for the magic loop method, if you're not aware, um, you place your yarn in between these three fingers and wrap it around your index finger three times. One, two, three. And then take your middle and ring finger and grab onto that little tail end. And you're going to take your crochet hook and place it under these two, the first two strands of yarn right there. And we're going to hook onto the third one and pull it under those two. Okay? And then we'll yarn over with this end and pull it through to make a chain. And now it's okay to take it off of your finger. And you'll see this is a great way to make a very really tight uh uh hole in the bottom so you don't have like an open hole. Um, you can also use the chain 2 method if you feel more comfortable. We'll be using this exact same method when we make um, the top of the shell as well. Okay, so uh, once you have the magic loop method made, we're going to be single crocheting six times into the second chain from the hook or into the magic loop method. Obviously we're doing the magic loop method. So we're just going to be single crocheting six times around these two ends here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Get that out of the way. All right, so once you have your six uh, single crochets on that, we can tighten this magic loop method. I like pulling this end, which shows me which end gets pulled in. Obviously, this end right here is getting pulled in more. And if that's the case, then you want to grab that one that's getting pulled in more, and you want to pull that one so that the other strand gets pulled tighter and then pull the other end. I have a whole video showing how I do the magic loop method in a little bit more detail. Um, I'll probably put a card right here. Okay, so that's the end of round one. For round two, we're just going to be doing an increase into each stitch all the way around. So we're going to find our first stitch right here. And this pattern is worked in the round, so you don't need to turn around for the entire piece. So we're going to crochet around this tail end just for a few of them, but we're just going to be doing increases into each stitch around. So just two single crochets, there's our first one right there, two single crochets into every stitch all the way around. One, two, here's three and four, five, and six. Now we can leave this tail end there, we'll cut it at the, at the end of this round. Seven and eight and you're going to get 12 stitches by the end of this round um, because we did six single crochets in the first round and if we're doing an increase into each stitch around that's going to uh, um, uh, bring us up to 12 stitches around so there we go we have 12 stitches 
For round three, we're going to be working a single crochet into our first stitch right here. So just a first one's a single crochet, and then we're going to be doing an increase into the next stitch. For an increase, you know, we do two single crochets. Okay, so we do a single crochet and then an increase, and we're going to repeat that six times total. So let's do our second repeat here. We're doing a single crochet, then an increase. Just keep going around. Single crochet, this is our third repeat. There's our third increase, and you should have six of these. And by doing this, you're going to increase up from 12 stitches around to 18 stitches around. So you should have 18 stitches by the end of round three here. Okay, just a couple more repeats. All right, here's going to be our last repeat here. We'll do a single crochet and then our increase. And to finish up the bottom of the shell, we're going to do a slip stitch into the next stitch. So we're going to go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull this loop through both of them, just like that. And we're going to cut this end. You don't need it too long. We just need to hide it in. And we're just going to pull it all the way out like that. And we're going to put it on the end of a darning needle. And we're going to do something called a hidden end. So we're going to make a fake crochet stitch. So that way it looks like you can't find the end. So how to do that is we're going to take this end. We're going to find the next stitch right here. We're going to go through the top of it. Okay. And then we're going to go back down through the center where this stitch comes out. So if you look where that came out, you want to go right back down through the center of that and then through a few stitches down on the body like that. That's just going to keep it in place. All right, let's tighten everything up a little bit. There we go. And as you can kind of see, it kind of makes it so it's hidden. It looks like um, it's supposed to look like another crochet stitch there. So you can't see where the end is. All right, so now we can just cut these two ends. You don't really need them for anything. I need better scissors here. Okay, and we're going to put that base to the side. We'll come back to it when we want to sew everything together. Now we can make the top, um, I call it the shell in the pattern. So for the shell, we're going to start with our green yarn. And we're going to start the same way as we started with the base. We're going to do a magic loop method or the chain two if you feel more comfortable with it. And we're going to start by doing, for round one, we're going to do six single crochets into the magic loop or into the second chain from the hook. The exact same way that we started with the base. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, now we're going to tighten everything up a little bit. That should be the end of round one. And round two is the exact same as the base as well. We're just going to find our first stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, this one right here. And we're just going to be doing an increase in each stitch around. I'm going to work around this tail for just a few stitches to lock it into place. But round two, round one and round two are the exact same as the base that we just finished making. So just copy that for round one and two and you should be good. Get a little bit more yarn. And now that I've crocheted around this a few times, I'm just gonna cut it. I should have done that on the base actually because it makes it a little bit easier. And we'll just keep increasing all the way around. By the end of round two, you should have 12 stitches around. Okay, let's do a quick count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Yep. Okay, so for round three of the shell, we're going to do a single crochet into each stitch around. So pretty simple. We're just going to be doing 12 single crochets. So just one single crochet all the way around. So you can probably tell I have a little band-aid on here. <laughs> I cut my finger like right before starting this video and I was like, oh no, but I have to, 
I wanted to get this video out as soon as I could. So I had to I had to just deal with a band-aid. It's kind of difficult to crochet with a band-aid actually. I, I'm surprised to know that like that a lot more um of my a lot of feeling goes into crocheting. Like I have to feel my stitches a lot more than I thought I did. Okay, so that's going to be the end of round three. For round four, we're going to be starting to do color changes. Um, so you're going to need to get your black yarn for this. You don't need a lot of color changes in this pattern. Um, we're just going to be doing some simple color changes just for where the holes are. So for round three, the pattern is we're just going to be doing a single crochet into the first stitch and then an increase into the next stitch. And we're going to repeat that six times total. So just like round three of the base is the exact same as round four for the shell here. We're doing a single crochet, then an increase. But we want to do a few color changes in it. So if the first one is um, all normal, single crochet, increase. Then we're going to do another single crochet. Now the, ne the second increase that you're going to want to do in the shell top, you want it to be black. So we're going to place the black yarn over these two ends, so you see, just like that. I'm going to hold it down with my index finger of my dominant right hand, and I'm just going to use my index finger of my non-dominant left hand to go in between these two ends and just flip it under. And then we're going to yarn over the black yarn, and we're just going to pull that through. Okay? So we'll do, that's our single crochet, increase, single crochet. Then our next increase here is all black, so we want two single crochets in this next stitch for an increase and then we want to change back to our green so we're gonna flip back under so that our green is on top pull green through okay so you can see we just have two um, stitches in black there now we'll just single crochet in the next stitch you can crochet around this you could skip it all together it doesn't matter um, I'm actually just gonna cut this yarn here, the black yarn, and we'll come back to it in just a second. Um, I find it best to just do that. We're going to stuff this closed anyhow, so having loose ends on the inside is not really that big of a deal. Okay, so we're going to continue our pattern of doing a single crochet, and then here's our increase, another single crochet, increase, okay, and this is all in green, obviously. And then this, um, this next increase that's going to be right here is going to be black. So um, we want to do our next single crochet in green and get our black prepared so we can do our color change. And I'll go over these stitches again in just a second. We're going to change to black. And we're just going to single crochet in the, or do an increase in the next stitch all in black. One, two, and then change back to our green. Okay. And we're going to finish up by just doing a single crochet in green and then an increase in green. But for our last stitch here, our last increase in green, we want to get this black because for round five, it's going to all be in black. So we want to flip over and pull through with our black yarn to finish up um, round four here. Okay, so uh, let me just go over that round three one more time before we get to round four. We did a single crochet and then an increase into each stitch around, but our second increase is black and our fifth increase is black as well. So we got our, these two are black ones. You can see these are going to be where the holes are for um, the shell. Okay, so that's going to be the end of round four. For round five, we're going to be doing a single crochet. Um, well, first off, we're going to be working almost entirely in the back loops only. Now, if you're following the written pattern, um, it tells you which stitches are worked in the back loops by underlining the stitches that are worked in the back loops. But the easier way to do this is just by going every stitch that's worked into a colored um, stitch so every stitch that's worked into a green stitch here is worked into the back loops the stitches that are worked uh, into these black loops are going to be um, worked into both loops okay now the pattern is we're going to be doing a single crochet in the first again we're working in the back loop so which means the loop furthest away from you right there we're going to be doing a single crochet into the first stitch 
and I'm just working around this uh, green yarn just for the first stitch there. Now I can cut it. Pull it out. We actually don't need the green anymore for the rest of this pattern. Okay, so we did a single crochet in the first back loop and then a decrease. Now when I say decrease, I don't mean an invisible decrease or a single crochet two together. I mean a sharp decrease. So we're going to go into the next stitch and pull a loop through and then go into the next next stitch right here, pull a second loop through and pull that second loop through the two on the hook like that. Okay, and that's going to be a harsh decrease. It'll really pull it in so it flattens it out. It's kind of like a slip stitch two together. Okay, so that's single crochet one, decrease, single crochet one. That's going to be the process, by the way. We're doing a single crochet, then a decrease, repeating it six times around, which is going to bring you down from 18 stitches back down to 12 stitches around. Okay, so we did our single crochet, decrease, single crochet. Here's our second decrease. Now we're working into the black stitches now, so we work into both loops, not just one. And I know it's kind of hard to see because of the black yarn. But I'm working into both loops there and doing a sharp decrease. Then we're doing a single crochet, continuing our pattern of a single crochet, then a decrease, single crochet, decrease, single crochet, and then a decrease worked into both loops here because we're on our black loops, single crochet, decrease, okay, and that's going to be the end of that round. You can see how it's really pulling it in or making the bottom of our shell here. Okay, so for our final round for the shell, we're just going to be doing a sharp decrease into each stitch all the way around. There should be six of them total. So we're just going to go into, and we can work into both loops now. So we go into both of these loops here. We're going to pull through and go into the next stitch, pull another one through, and pull that second loop through the two on the hook. Boom, like that. We're just going to keep doing that six times total. So here's our second, our third, a little bit more yarn here. Here's our fourth. As it gets smaller here, you can see I pinch it. I pinch our piece to easy to more easily get into those stitches. And here's the last one right here. Okay. All right. Now we can cut the yarn. You need just long enough to sew it closed. We're just going to pull it all the way out. And now you want to stuff your piece just a little bit. So we're just going to grab a little bit of our stuffing. Now why I really like this uh, crochet hook, I think this is, I don't know, clover or something, is the back of it is really good for stuffing. So I take my stuffing, place it over the hole, and I'm just going to use the back of the crochet hook here to just stuff it closed. Just a really nice perk of this crochet hook. If you don't have a crochet hook like this, try a pencil. Um, the uh, eraser end of a pencil is really good for stuffing. Okay. All right. Now we're just going to sew this uh, the shell top closed. We're going to thread the end here with our darning needle. And we're just going to sew it closed. Um, now I have a very specific way that I sew pieces closed. Um, basically, I count up three stitches. So first off, this stitch here is I call our zero stitch. It's the first stitch, the last stitch that we worked to decrease into. So we're not going to count that one. We're going to count one, two, three, go out through the top of that the third one, and then back out through our zero stitch like that. Okay, right across. Okay, now we're going to go into the next stitch over, and I know this is really difficult to see because it's black. But we're going to go into the next stitch over right here. Um, so stitch four, come back out through stitch one. And we're going to pull that tighter now. And we're just going to continue that around. We're basically making an asterisk. We're going to go down through stitch five and out through stitch two. OK. 
Okay, we're going to pull that tighter now. And we can finish this up by going straight down through our last stitch right there. And we're going to just come out somewhere on the top of the shell. Pull it tighter. Get this lint out of the way. And we're going to go back down through the same stitch right here and right back down through the base, right through as close to the middle as we can, like that. Now, while this is threaded together, I'm just going to get us set up because we're going to need to do this later anyhow. I'm going to take my base and I'm going to take this end and go straight through the middle of the base, like that. Okay? This is going to be um, how we're going to hold these two together. It'll be easier to keep them together that way. So we're going to place this to the side. Uh, we just need to make our border now, and then we can um, get sewing together everything. Okay, so for the base, we're going to be using our white yarn here. And we want to make a slip knot. Um, you want this end to be actually kind of long, not too long. Maybe about, yeah, that's good. We're just going to make a slip knot. Grab our crochet hook. And we're just going to chain 19. That's pretty easy. Just chain 19. One, two, three, four. And don't let your chains become too tight. You want them somewhat loose, but not too loose. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. There we go. Okay, so pretty long chain. Now we can cut the yarn. You want a relatively long end here, so that's probably pretty good because we're going to use this for sewing this on. And we're just going to pull this loop all the way through. And just pull it all the way up. And you don't want to pull it too tight, but you want it a little bit tight. Okay, so now let's sew everything together. This is definitely the trickiest part of the entire pattern. First, you want to thread the um, long end that we just cut onto our needle here. Now, my written pattern, I have written out these instructions, and it's pretty confusing. It's hard to write down. So it's hard for me to explain it in, um, in words. So uh, I'm just going to have to try to show you as much as I possibly can here. Okay, so to start, we want to enter our piece um, right before the end of round four here. So you see where these front bars are from, um, this is from round four, all these green front bars. That's where we're going to be sewing it around. We're going to be sewing it around these front bars and around the front loops of our shell. So we're only going to be working into these two pieces here, okay? We're going to take the end here and go right before that front bar. Like, let's say, like, right, like right there. Not technically in a stitch. We're going to come out under that front bar. Okay? All right. Now, you want to take our end here. Pull that a little tighter. And we want to go under the back loop of our chains. So if you look at the chains, okay, we got top, we got bottom, but we also have a back. On the back, it looks kind of like a spine. You see all these little doo 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 doos? We want to go into those. So we want to go into our second one right here, just like that. Okay. Okay, so the order is go into the under the front loop, under the uh, back loop there, and then under the um, the front loop, or is that the back loop? I don't know. The loop closest to you on the base. So right here, the closest one right there. And then go under the next front bar of the shell. Okay? And then we're going to go into... So let's go under that next front bar of the shell. Okay. And then we'll go under <clears throat> under the next back loop on the chain, on the border. And we're going to keep repeating that. So next front loop, next bar, next chain. So you can do them all together like that. And you don't need to pull them too tight, but you also, you know, at the same time, you don't want it too loose. We're going to keep doing that. Front, 
taskbar, chain. Now when you get to the hole here, you actually want to skip two of these stitches and we're just going to be using the border and the shell. So we're going to go kind of around the top of the hole here. So we're going to skip two of these um, two of these front two of these stitches here. So this one and this one, we're going to skip those. And we're going to go into the next we're going to go into the center of this next stitch right here. Okay? And then we're going to come out right through the top. Top of the hole, I mean. Okay. Now in through the next back loop on the base, down through the same hole, and out through the middle of that next stitch after the hole. All right. Get all that fuzz out of the way. In through the next front loop, or back loop rather, right there, and down through the front of that, uh, the next bar right there. Okay, now we're skipping the two stitches, one, two, going in through the front loop of the next one. And there you go. So we're gonna do that on each hole, see? So it's gonna like go around it. And now we'll keep doing our process of sewing the things together. We're going the back loop here. We're gonna go into the front bar, into the next one. Okay, so we're just kinda like going around again. Doing the same old thing. Front bar, next one. There we go. Okay, and you see what I'm doing? I'm just, just continually going around. Just making sure this border is sewn on. I don't know how I figured this out, but I did. I don't know. <laughs> okay. There we go. Okay, so now we're at our next hole. So we're going to go into the front loop, or I mean the back loop, and then do the same thing. We're going to go into the middle of the next stitch, then up through the top right there. Got de-threaded from the needle. Okay. Let's do the next back loop right there. Into the top, out through the side. Again, remember we're doing in the middle of that stitch. Next front loop. And now you can see we're back at the bar, so now we're gonna go up through this bar again. We're skipping two of the stitches, so one, two. Let's go through this one. Okay. Next front, or next back bar on the base, I mean on the border. Then front loop on the shell, loop on the base. We're almost at the end here. Just a few more. Base, front loop, body. Okay, I'm going to squish it together a little bit. You can see how everything's sewn together. Okay, now here is where we come to the end, right there. Okay, so let's just do our last base right there. And we're just going to go through, through. Okay, now you have a few different options here for sewing it, uh, for hiding this end together because we want it to look like it's just going 
straight into the into the base again. So uh, there's a few different options here. One, first off, let's go into this last front loop of our um, of our border. And I'm just going to go down through and right down through the center. Okay, so I'm just like kind of going into the body with that. There we go. Oops. I went around our second tail. We don't want that to happen, so I'm going to pull that back out. Okay. All right. Now, um, you can either do like a hidden end here, uh, connecting this the start of our border to the end of our border. You can do a hidden end, or um, looks like we might be able to just go straight down through the through the very center of the first stitch, first chain on our border right there. We just go straight through the center of that, and we go th straight through the last um, front loop there. Kind of freeform in this, and then down through the very center. Okay. So my my needle just went down through the first chain from the border, down through the last back loop of our base, and then straight down through the center of our shell there. We're going to thread this end on, and we're just going to pull it all the way through. Okay? And that should give us a somewhat hidden end there. We have a little goof right there, but that's okay. I'm, I'll work with it. I'm fine with that. Okay, now to finish it up, we just need to cut the ends here on the very bottom. You don't really need to tie them together because I don't think it's going to come apart, but you can. You can double knot them on the inside if you want. We're going to take the back of our needle and I'm just going to stuff those ends back into the bottom there so they're hidden. And the last thing that I want to do is I want to pick all the extra lint off the sides. I want to squish it around so that it feels more normal. And I want to open these holes up just a little bit on both sides. All right, there we go. And now you have a Mario shell. You can toss it onto a keychain or something. Now, if you want to make this into um, the spiked ends here, um, I mean into a, like a blue shell, uh, obviously you use blue yarn, but to make the um, spikes and stuff, it's the same as, uh, uh, you know what, I'll just show you really quick. I'll just show you. So you're just gonna take the white yarn. This is for the, um, this is for the spikes. You're gonna take some white yarn, make a slip knot, and chain two. One, two. Now we're going to pull that second chain tight and go into the back loop of the second chain from the hook right here. You gotta work it around with your fingernail maybe. And yarn over, pull through to make a uh, single crochet and we're just gonna single crochet into that back loop like so. Okay, there you go. Now to finish it up, we're going to do a chain one just pull that all the way through. And that is how we're going to make all the spikes. So you're going to need seven of these spikes. Okay? Now for the um for the wings, we're going to take our yarn, make a slip knot, and you're going to chain five. One two, three, four, five. Like before, we're gonna be working into the back loops. We're gonna skip our first back loop and into the second back loop right here, we're going to do a slip stitch. Get your crochet hook into there. We're just gonna do a slip stitch. Okay. Now into the next back loop right here, you want to do a single crochet. Now you want to chain one, go into the next back loop, do a single crochet, chain one again, and go into the same stitch that we just worked our last single crochet, make another single crochet, 
and finish it up by doing a single, single crochet into the last back loop. Okay, just like that. And you see it makes like a curved wing. See? Now we can just cut the yarn. Make a chain and pull it all the way through. And we're going to take the, you want to make two of these and you want to sew them onto um, the the shell, the top of the shell. Now you want to do this before it's all sewn together, of course. This is, it's really hard to show, uh, especially in a video. It's kind of just like, I kind of go with the flow when it comes to, to the spikes. Um, I know for sure that you need to have um, the spikes in very specific places. So let me show you on the top here. You need one spike coming straight through the top. So I just like sewing it on by going through like, I don't know, near the top right here, just so it's sticking straight up. Then you need one above both of the holes. So you need like one right here and one right here. And you're just gonna put the ends in and double knot them on the inside. Then you need two on either side of the top spikes above the holes. Okay, so you need one right here, you need one right here and then on the other side, and that'll be where all of seven spikes go. And then you need two wings, and the wings go on the side, so like right here and right there. Obviously, um, this can be kind of difficult. Uh, it can take you a while, but you have to do that when you make um, the top of the shell. Okay. So I hope that was, um, I hope you liked that video. Uh, I know it, this one was a lot more freeform than most of my normal videos. And that's because this is a little bit more complicated to teach, um, specifically the sewing together parts. Uh, let me know if you like this more freeform content in the comments below. Um, it's a little bit easier for me to do these kinds of videos than it is for me to do a very um, detailed video showing every little part. Uh, it takes me a while to build those kind of videos. Uh, whereas these little um, freeform ones are a little bit easier for me to put together and I can make a little bit more of them. I, I hope you like this video. If you have any questions at all, again, let me know in the comments um, or reach out to me on Facebook. We're uh, facebook.com slash official club crochet, I think. There's also a club crochet uh, Facebook group where you can ask questions. I'll put both those links in the description below. Uh, and if you'd like to support this channel, um, you can get this mario pattern uh, at clubcrochet.com slash mario um, you can also get it by becoming a club crochet member members get exclusive patterns just like this mario pattern every single month uh, they also get yarn mailed directly to their door with all the materials that they need to make uh, each month's pattern so this month you're getting all the materials that you need to make mario and enough to make an extra shell as well um, and let's see what else do you, oh club crochet members also get exclusive Amy Groomy 101 tutorials so I teach how to make different kinds of arms and weird how to do weird color changes and bobble stitches stuff like that um anyhow check it out at clubcrochet.com get this mario pattern at clubcrochet.com slash mario and thank you so much for watching pasta la pizza and happy hooking bye boink